A thorough and systematic examination of each new orthodontic patient is essential for accurate diagnosis to be made. Accurate diagnosis is a guarantee of making an appropriate treatment plan. It is very important to keep sequence of examination. You should collect patient's database, personal details, chief complaint, medical history, dental history, to provide extraoral and intraoral examination. Extraoral examination begins with establishment of contact with the patient. What is your name? My name is Sasha. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 18. Okay. Uh, where do you study in? Where do you study? I'm in the medical university. He is, in, he is studying in medical university. Notice lip competence, word spelling, and breathing while patient is speaking. Chief complaints consist of aesthetic drawbacks, chewing, biting, speech disturbances, bleeding of the gums, clicking, and pain in temporomandibular joints. Why do you come to meet me? Почему ты обратился к нам? Мы нашел относительно маленькую верхнюю челюсть. Немного кривые зубы, и хочу, чтобы фронтальные передние зубы стали немножко впереди, чем задние. Окей. Okay. He, he complains of uh, small maxilla, crooked teeth, and um, he would like to uh, move frontal teeth forward concerning the lower teeth. Okay. Dental history. The most important is to find out information about early or late eruption of deciduous and permanent teeth and premature loss of teeth. Past medical history. It's important to screen past medical history using a medical questionnaire that you can then discuss with the parents. Also, you should ask about pre- and postnatal history, such as pregnancy conditions, type of feeding, infections, rickets, traumas, etc. Extraoral examination. Orthodontic assessment of a patient begins with an extraoral examination. This involves detailed assessment of skeletal pattern, soft tissues, functions and temporomandibular joints. Skeletal pattern is the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla and the relationship of each to cranial base in all three planes of space. Now we assess a skeletal pattern in anterior posterior plane, in surgical plane. We assess patient's profile uh, by position of three points nasium, subnasium and pogonium. Uh, these points should lie on the same line, on the same, in the same plane. In this case, we have retroposition of subnasium. This is in accordance with the retroposition of maxilla. This type of profile is called a concave profile and the, mm, may be associated with three skeletal pattern of patient. Class 1. Mandible is 2-3 mm posterior to maxilla, straight profile. Class 2. Mandible retruded and or maxilla prominent, convex profile. And class 3. Maxilla retruded and mandible prominent, concave profile. Skeletal pattern in vertical plane should be assessed in frontal view of patient. We should assess uh, the height of lower and middle facial height. It's necessary to measure the height of the middle and the lower facial height from the points on the, uh, of, from ophrium to subnasium, it's a middle uh, facial height and from subnasium to gnatium, it's a lower facial height. 
in normal patient these heights should be equal Increased low facial height is associated with vertical growth pattern. Decreased lower facial height is associated with horizontal growth pattern. In transverse plane, we assess symmetry or asymmetry of the face. You should assess the points of eyebrows, eyes, ala of nose, angle of the mouth and position of the chin concerning middle line of the face. Our patient has slightly asymmetrical face. Soft tissues. It is particularly important to assess soft tissues carefully to find out are they the cause of malocclusion or they have adapted to it. Soft tissues examination includes examination of lips, chin, mental labial fold, nasal labial folds, and examination of the nose. Examination of lips should include investigation of forms, tonicity, fullness, and competence of lips. Our patient has insufficient anatomical lens of upper lip due to surgical scar, sufficient fullness of the lower lip. These lips are competent. Examination of chin includes assessment of position and prominence of chin. Prominence of chin is associated with three class malocclusion. Assessment of mental activity muscles. Normally, we, we should see absence of mental activity, some constructions or tonicity. If we have this, it's thimble symptom. A symptom of uh, infantile swallowing or habitual oral breathing. Now we assess expression of nasal label and mental label faults. Normally uh, they should be shallow. In this patient nasal label faults are expressed and mental label faults is shallow. Assessment of the nose. Our patient has got normal size of nose normal weights of bridge of the nose, oval shape of nostrils, area of nose uh, did, don't involved in the breathing. Functional examination. It is very important because careful and thorough elimination of functional disturbances guarantees stability of treatment results and prevents after treatment relapses. Examination of functions involves breath pattern, swallowing pattern, speech articulation, and assessment of TMG. Assessment of respiration or type of breathing. There are three types of breathing nasal, oronasal, and oral. Our patient uh, have competent lips and nasal type of breathing. Assessment of swallowing. Uh, we ask our patient to swallow. Normally, during uh, mature sw swallowing, we see absence of some participants of uh, muscles of oral cavity. But now we see a uh, tension of muscles of lips. It's a sign of infantile swallowing. To check the presence of infantile swallowing, we try to move the lips of the patient and ask patient to swallow again. 
еще раз. Now you see the position, the real position of tip of the thumb and thrusting of the thumb between the teeth. And I feel the tonicity of the lips during swallowing. It's a sign of infantile swallowing. Assessment of speech. For assess of function of speech, you ask patient uh, to speak or to tell, to tell some key words or some key phrases. For example, скажи, пожалуйста, 333. Thanks a lot. You see patients speech with uh, some signs of lisping and nasal tone. TMG examination. For TMG examination, we should put fingers on the area or the region of the condylar um, head. We instruct patient to open mouth widely, slowly, in a vertical and lateral plane. Пожалуйста, открывай рот. Закрывай. Еще. Закрывай. Открой, пожалуйста, рот. Перемести челюсть влево, вправо. Thanks. Any clicks, pain or hypermobility are indication for more deep investigation. Investigation of muscles and others.